When the whole family comes together to watch the game, nobody wants to miss a second of the action to run to the grocery store. With Instacart, you can get all your weekly groceries in as fast as an hour. Less time shopping means more game time. Let's go. Visit instacart.com to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply. All right. We are uh, happy to be joined by Ken Pomroy. His service is Ken Pom, every college basketball fan in the country follows it uh ken welcome how are you are you in a place where it's uh frigid freezing uh not quite frigid no i'm out here in salt lake city and you know it's a relatively comfortable uh 32 degrees and sunny right now well, it's seven degrees here in wichita so i envy you uh yeah, my, so my, yeah, i my, mentioned <laughs> I mentioned early in the show that it's uh, difficult to draw many conclusions as to the college basketball season so far. Uh, Houston, Arizona, Purdue, and Auburn are your top four in the Ken Palm rankings. Houston's lost a couple in a row. Arizona's scuffling a little bit. Purdue recently lost. Are, is uh, Have you seen the rankings uh, in this kind of a jumble before? Oh, I yeah, I don't know how to how to answer that one. I mean, I, the way I look at it is, you know, last year was the the first season in in the history of the sport where every power conference team had at least six losses at the end of the year. So, you know, the standard for which we, uh, you know, identify excellence at this point is uh, maybe a little different than it was, you know, twenty thirty years ago, where a team could get through with two or three losses. Like, you know, teams are going to lose games. Even the best teams are going to lose games, and that does make it a little harder, I think, too identify who the best teams are but um but i i, I will say where well, it seems like you know we're headed to another year like that where uh, it wouldn't surprise me if every every power conference team enters the tournament with you know at least five losses so what is that uh based on is that uh is that because of the transfer portal and the fact that now players are recruited basically uh all the time and if they don't see the opportunity to become a starter somewhere, maybe they'll go somewhere else and have that opportunity. Is that creating this kind of balance? Is that have a is that a factor in it? If not, what is? I would say that's a factor. I would say the number one factor is um, the COVID year right now. So, you know, college basketball is just older than it normally is, and. Uh, there's just more experience and more talent out there. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, yes, the transfer portal. I mean, that, that talent now, it can find playing time wherever it wants. So, um, you know, like the, I think the second leading scorer in the nation is Xavier Johnson at Southern Illinois. And he, you know, started at George Mason and he's, he transferred to Southern Illinois and he's in his fifth year and he, he didn't get really good at basketball until his fifth year. So, in a normal in a normal situation, in a normal era, he'd probably be still at George Mason, and he probably would be actually wouldn't be at George Mason. He'd be playing in Italy somewhere right now because his eligibility would have expired. But he had that extra year, and um, he's able to really really help that program. And that's just one example, but I think it illustrates the effect you're talking about, where there's just there's just more talent now, and there's also, by the way, less higher end talent. So, you know, there's more freshmen that are you know, bypassing college and playing in Australia or playing in the G League or, or playing at overtime elite. Um, and so that helps, I mean, that hurts some of the, you know, higher end so-called blue blood programs who normally would grab one or two or three elite freshmen. Those those freshmen just don't exist anymore. And especially this year when it's a, a weaker class than normal anyway, like the, the quality of the freshman class is, you know, it's probably lower than it's ever been. You can go to uh, KenPom.com and check out the Ken Pomeroy College Basketball Rankings. You can also subscribe to this service, which I highly recommend. Ken Pomeroy is our guest. Uh, so the Big 12 is one of those conferences that we spoke about being so balanced. Uh, uh, quite a few losses won it last year. Uh, Baylor and Texas Tech right now are undefeated. Uh, do you expect six, five or six losses uh, to again uh, be good enough to win the Big Twelve? Yeah, very well could be. I mean, right now my projections have Houston losing five in conference play, and that would be the fewest. So it's conceivable, you know, 
Baylor's able to sneak through with four or five losses or, you know, somebody's able to, to get their act together. I mean, my, my system's really down on Kansas, but I, I suspect a lot of people feel that Kansas could, um, you know, get through with four losses or something like that. Wouldn't surprise me if four losses won it, but that's going to, I mean, I, I think people around the country probably don't appreciate the fact that if you can get through the big 12 with four losses, you're a very good basketball team. And, you know, the way voting for the AP poll works, if you if you have four losses in conference, you're probably not going to be like the number one team at the end of the year. But um, but it's just such a meat grinder in the league, especially on the road. I think people, you know, they thought when when you'd add, you know, BYU and Cincinnati and, and UCF, like, oh, we're going to have some easier games on the road. And, uh, you know, as we've seen, that's not the case. I mean, certainly UCF is a, is a competent basketball team. They may not be a tournament team, but you're going to have a difficult time going in there and getting a win. Um, and, and same is true for, you know, Cincinnati and BYU as well. Like, ultimately, those teams have not really hurt the conference at all. It's still, uh, you know, still clearly the best conference in the country. And, uh, and as I said, just the, the home court advantage across the league really makes it difficult to put up an excellent record. Yes, sir. Uh, Ken, this is Anthony. Uh, I also have a question for you, too. I know you guys are talking about the Big 12. I want to shift around and talk about the American Athletic Conference because they, too, have had an influx of new teams. How many teams do you see actually making it to the tournament? If the tournament were to start today, how many teams would actually make it from that conference? Because this has been said that they may be a one, two at the most. Do you see more than that? No, I think I think right now it's fair to say, you know, obviously FAU and Memphis are pretty clearly tournament teams. Um and then after that, it's really hard to find a third one. Um, SMU has had a really nice year, and, and they're rated well, you know, in the net, rated well in, in my system at 45th. Uh, they don't quite have the, the resume yet. I mean, they really don't have, you know, a quality win that they can hang their hat on. Um, so when you're looking for a, a third team to come from the league, at this point it certainly seems like they're going to have to, you know, win the conference tournament and then, you know, hope that, Obviously, Memphis and, and FAU would get out larger than that case. So that, that would be your path to, like, a three-bid American. But, yeah, in terms of, like, at-large resumes right now, it's FAU and Memphis, like, clearly in. And then I think it's everybody else who's, like, really struggling at this point. Talking now with Ken Palm, Roy College basketball expert. His work can be seen on at KenPalm.com. So you mentioned Memphis, and they're – they're not uh, ranked that high in your rankings. Do you? Are there times, Ken, when your uh, w- when your uh, numbers make you even scratch your head a little bit? Why is Memphis only in the mid forties at this point with a gaudy record, a tremendous offense? They certainly look the part of a potential Final Four team if their defense comes together. What are your thoughts on Memphis? Yeah, when you look at Memphis. I mean, certainly the the record shines, but obviously my system is, is going a little bit deeper and kind of looking at, at how those wins came about. I think, you know, some of their wins too earlier in the season maybe aren't as good as, as we thought. You know, like early in the season they beat a Michigan team that, you know, maybe you know could have been a tournament team and it did pick up an important win today against Ohio State, but uh, they're not looking like a tournament team at this point. You know, they beat an Arkansas team that uh, eventually, you know, beat Duke, which is a, a really quality win. But since then, Arkansas has just completely cratered and fallen off the map. Um, you know, even other wins like, you know, Clemson and, and Virginia at home, like both of those teams, I think their reputation has taken a hit since those wins. So um, so that's part of the deal. And the other part is, like, they're they're struggling against not very good teams. Like, they went to overtime against UTSA. Um, that's a right. pretty, pretty brutal game, you know, like, struggled to beat Vanderbilt at home, like both those games at home. Like it's like, th- those are just going to, those are not good signs for the future. Let's put it that way. Like obviously they're wins and people tend to think, Hey, well, you know, you just, you just play down to your competition, but you do that enough and, and you're going to get burned. And obviously, you know, in the NCAA tournament, there's really no room to be playing down to your competition. You're going to be playing really good competition every game. And so um, eventually you just, you just get burned in those close games. So I don't, you know, I have Memphis 44th right now. I don't know if they're, they're quite that bad, but I do not see them as like a, a top 10 team right now. 
Uh, amongst your top 40, and we're talking with Ken Pomeroy, who, who are you surprised to see in your top 40? And maybe on the flip side of that, who are you surprised to see not in your top 40 as we uh, get to the second half of January here? Well, I mean, to me, um, certainly like Colorado State, I guess, the beginning of the season, you know, they weren't a team that um, I would have expected to be, you know, a safe tournament team. Um, but they have just consistently shown that they are uh, a really solid squad. They're currently 26 um, in my system. Um, so that's, you know, probably one of the teams that, that looks looks pretty good. Um as far as teams that I guess haven't made the top 40, you know, one team that's been pretty awful is they're not even in the top 100 right now is UCLA. And I would have, I realized they had a lot of new pieces coming in. Um, you know, some guys from overseas that maybe didn't, you know, were unfamiliar to, to people in the U S but it seemed like they had the kind of roster that Nick Cronin could work with. And, you know, he's, he gets the he usually gets the most out of his his roster, so I felt like the talent on that mm-hmm. roster should have been good enough to, uh, you know, certainly be in the mix for for at large bid. Maybe not a great team, but um, but they have just been dreadful to say the least. Uh, you know, did pick up a win last night over Washington, but but they have really struggled to, to beat quality competition, and so um, you know, that's certainly one to me a, a huge surprise just how how bad they've been. I don't think I can uh, finish this interview without asking you about NIL and the transfer portal and the, the incredible changes in college athletics. What do you foresee? Uh, do you think this will all settle down and we'll all become accustomed to it and there'll become, there'll, there will be some parameters that are easily explainable and we, we get it? Or how long will the chaos last in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, those are two separate issues to me. Like the transfer portal, I, I, you know, it's here to stay. And I think, well, well, ultimately, especially with the, you know, the court ruling, they kind of allowed uh, the two-time transfers immediate eligibility this year. I just think we're headed to a, you know, a state where you can transfer freely every year. And, and some guys will do that and, and some people won't. I mean, there's still, there's still guys that stay in their program for four or five years, but I, I kind of like the transfer portal personally. I know it takes some adjustment. I mean, I, I grew up in an era where, you know, you, once a person enrolled as a freshman, you, know, you pretty much expect them to be there as a senior. And it's taking some adjusting to, you know, to appreciate this new world. But, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's clearly good for the players. I know it's not great for the coaches, and maybe it's not great for the fans, although I do think by the time you get to conference play, you kind of, you kind of know your roster at that point. But um, so – the transfer portal is here to stay, and I think it's ultimately good for college basketball. NIL is good for the players as well, and I, that's the area where I think you're going to see, yeah, more evolution. I don't know where it's going to end up, if it's going to end up with colleges just outright paying players, if we're eventually going to see a separation from, you know, the, the athletics and the, the educational part of the, the the game. I mean, that's that's something else that could happen. It's, it is a little bit more scary, the NIL part. Ultimately, there's going to have to be more regulation. I mean, right now, it's, um, there's there's just it's not a great situation for the players where they're you know they're entering into contracts that maybe aren't fair to them or they're just naive about the terms of. And so, I think more regulation will be good for all parties involved. And um, I think you know, I don't think it'll hurt the sport. I think the sport will will carry on, and ultimately, the players are are getting a piece of the pie that um, you know I think they've long deserved all right really appreciate your insight we know you're a busy guy we appreciate you too coming on our show thanks ken all right thanks bob appreciate it